The texts often talk about concentration as being a home for the mind, the Vihara Dhamma, the place where the mind can settle in. Before you can settle in, though, you have to build a house. As John Lee said, the, the work in building this house is in the directed thought and evaluation. You find a topic that you like to think about, and then you evaluate it here in the present moment. For example, with the breath, you've got all kinds of breathing that you could focus on. Or you can start with the breath energies in the body. Some people find that easier to focus on than the in and out breath to begin with. Just scan through the body. Notice where there's any tension or tightness. Think of it relaxing. And then move on until you've been through the body several times. And as you do that, many times you'll find that the in and out breathing will find its own rhythm. That's just right for the quality of the body. The important thing is that you're focused in the sensations or on the sensations in the present moment. And that's what you're thinking about, and that's what you're evaluating. It's not like you're thinking about someplace else or analyzing things in very abstract terms. You're asking very practical questions. How does it feel? It's just a place where you could settle in. How's the living room? How's the dining room? Is it big enough? Or do you feel cramped or tight? Okay, you've got to expand the house. Think not only of the body, but also of the, the area immediately around the body. Can you sense that? There's an energy there. Is there an energy field there that you can sense? Some people can, some people can't. But if you can, how do you make use of it? That's a lot of what the evaluation is about. It's like looking at the lumber and the other things you've got for the house. What can you make with this lumber? You may have had one house in mind, but when you actually get your materials, you see, whoops, not quite what I thought it was or what I could do with it. Well, make the best of what you've got. You find there are some parts of the body where the energy is hard to work with. Well, work around it. If there's a blockage someplace, think the breath can go right through it. If there's a pain in one part of the body and the more you focus on it, the more it seems to get worse, well, ask yourself, what is my perception adding to the pain? Can I think about the pain using other perceptions? So the evaluation here evaluates both the breath and other physical aspects of the body, and it evaluates what you're doing to see what can be changed. One perception game that I found useful is if you feel that there's a pain in your back, ask yourself, suppose that pain was actually a pain in the front of the body, and I'm misperceiving it. And hold that perception in mind. It's actually something in the front. Then you find that the energies in the body move around. Sometimes even your posture will change a bit. And you've learned something about the power of perception. You've learned something about how you relate to the body, how your awareness relates to the body. And you begin to realize there's a lot to explore in the present moment. Someone asked me the other day what I found interesting in the breath. And I said, well, there's just so much in the area of how does your awareness relate to the fact that you've got this physical body here? And how can your awareness, it's just an awareness, how can it do something with the body? How can it move the body? Why is it that your perceptions change the way you sense the body? How does this all work? What's going on in the present moment? If you can get interested in that, you've won half the battle right there. Because the house is not just a nice place to rest and then go out and look for entertainment. You find there's a lot of entertainment in the house, a lot to learn about in the house here. Because it's not just a house of lumber and, and shingles. It's the home of your awareness in this body. 
you've taken up residence in this body, you've been with it for a long time, well, what's actually going on here with this relationship? There's plenty to study. The other different elements or properties, earth, water, wind, fire. Breath, of course, is part of the wind element. On cold days like this, it's good to have something warm inside. Well, where are the warm parts of the body, or the parts that are warmer than others? Think about those, evaluate those, and see how you can integrate them with the breath. And if this is too much, say, well, I just want to rest. You work at building the house and you can't work 24-7, so you rest in what you've got. Find a little corner where it feels comfortable, and you can gain a sense that you would like to stay here for a while. Someone was telling us about a meditation teacher who would get into different levels of concentration but wouldn't stay there very long because they weren't pleasant. That's not right concentration. The right concentration has to be a place where you can settle down and stay for long periods of time. So the amount of pressure you're putting on the breath, is it something you could put on it for a long period of time or are you putting on too much? If it's too much, okay, back off a bit, try to find out what's just right and something that you can stick with for long periods of time. It's not like you're going to push, 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 and then break through to something. You just stay here and learn how to be balanced right here. And the more precise your awareness of what's going on, the more precise your sensitivity to what's going on, the more solid the breath becomes, the more solid your concentration becomes. So we're evaluating the breath, and evaluating the way the mind relates to the breath. And then when there's a sense of pleasure that does come, okay, you evaluate what to do with that. How do you spread it without ruining it? If you push on it to spread it around, that's, it's not going to be pleasant anymore. The pleasure has to radiate. It has to glow. Or sometimes it will flow, but you can't push it. All you can do is open up the different channels of energy and see what happens. And it's in this way that you find that you can develop a place where you can settle in and stay. And when the work is done, that directed thought and evaluation work, okay, then you can rest in deeper levels of concentration. Because the whole body has been worked through, cleaned out. It's like with directed thought and evaluation, you're sweeping through the body, getting rid of all the cobwebs, getting rid of all the dust. And when they're gone, you can settle in, become one with the breath. Unification of awareness, as the Buddha calls it. Where there's a sense of flow, and there's no sense that the flow is going to stop. It just flows, and you're right there. The Buddha's image is of a lake that's fed by a stream. One of the Tayajans called it still flowing water. God, the mind is still, but there's a sense of flow in the body. And you allow that to mature. You settle in. A lot of the work of the concentration as you're going to go from one level to the next is just really settling in. And then you find some place where you hadn't settled properly. Well, dig away at that like a dog that's found a root that's getting in the way of the place it wants to lie down, or a stone that scratches it away and then lies down and has an even greater sense of ease. And at this point you don't have to count the levels of concentration you go through. Just start asking yourself these questions, because this is what the work is all about. Settling in, then realizing, okay, it's not quite right, back up a little bit, check things out, evaluate again, and then you can sense what's wrong, okay, fix that, and then settle in again. And if you don't see anything wrong, you just stay right there. Let the mind gain a sense of ease, get a sense of well-being. As the Buddha says, you want to indulge in this sense of well-being. 
because it's nourishing for the mind. John Fuhrman called it the lubricant of our practice. Keeps things flowing, keeps things smoothly, not running dry, not running into a lot of friction. You get a greater and greater sense that you really belong here. This is a good place to be. And you don't feel any great need to move. Some people are afraid that when they get into concentration, they'll get stuck there and won't be able to get out. I mean, you can get out easily. In fact, concentration is one of the easiest things in the world to leave. The stuckness that they're afraid of is the fear that, and it's, there is a legitimate fear that you crave this so much that you get really upset about anything that disturbs it. And you always keep wanting to run away to your concentration and not deal with the issues of the world or deal with your own other inner issues. Because that can be a problem. But first develop the concentration, because those problems can be solved. The problem that can't be solved is if you're afraid to do the concentration and don't do it. Or if you're afraid to settle in, if you're afraid to stay. You're looking for a place where you can stay for long periods of time. Because there are a lot of issues in the mind that you won't be able to understand unless you watch them for long periods of time from a very steady perspective. as we deal with the troublemakers in the mind, the defilements and other unskillful qualities. You have to realize they have all kinds of tricks. And it's only a very steady gaze that can see through some of those tricks. So this is what you need. Find a, an object that you can stay with, and if it's not quite right, well, you evaluate it and adjust it so that some of you can stay with for long periods of time. With a lot of without a lot of in and out, in and out. It's like riding in a car. If the driver's foot isn't steady, it goes up and down, up and down. It's not a pleasant ride. You want to be able to settle in so you can stay steadily here. As for whatever level of jhana it might be or whatever, you can put those questions aside. Right concentration is not focused on jhana, it's focused on an object like the breath. The quality of the concentration itself comes from being really settled and doing your proper concentration work so you can settle in even more. Because you want this quality of awareness that allows you to be steady and watch other things that are very subtle. and whose connection may take a while to understand, or to watch, and to see. So try to get a state that can stay steadily here. If you can do the work you need to do, that goes further than concentration. It leads you to something that's even more solid and even greater refuge than the, your little home of concentration. Think of it as a little shack that you build as part of the path. You build it well because you're going to be on the path for a while. And learn the lessons that come from staying steadily with one object. Your sensitivities will become improved. Your standard as to what counts as pleasure will get heightened. It's the steadiness that makes all the difference in the mind.